Hello and welcome to our TFIT Clean webinar. My name's Luffa and I'm the Global Marketing Manager for TFIT Clean. Today's session will last around 45 minutes and we will begin with a welcome message from our Director of HP Businesses, James Bridges. We will then follow this up with a session hosted by Mike Rust, our Global Development Manager. Mike will walk us through those specific dangers that could be lurking in your clean room insulation, whilst explaining how TFIT Clean can help you overcome these. Following this, we are delighted to be joined by Brian Farhi, Managing Director of ESI. ESI are master distributors of TFIT Clean, so they have direct experience working with some of the biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world. We will then wrap up with a live Q&A session with all speakers to finish on. Once I finish speaking, I will hand you over to James, but before I do, some quick housekeeping rules. In order to enable audio, you may need to click on the screen. If this is required, you'll be prompted by the webinar software. All delegates have been muted upon entry and your cameras have been turned off. If you wish to ask a question in the live Q&A, please do so in the text box. We are recording this session and it will be available to watch and share on our YouTube channel and website. Finally, at the end of this session, you will be sent a quick survey. Please do take the time to fill it in and send back as your feedback is invaluable to us. Many thanks and enjoy. Now over to James. Hello, my name is James Bridges. I am the HPP Director for Zoke Foams. As part of my role, I'm very excited to be the head of the TFIT business. And I'm really excited to welcome you all to this webinar to, to go through why our unique materials give you such a good advantage. Today, in this webinar, we're really focusing on why TFIT Clean is the only choice to make when choosing an insulation for a clean room. Clean rooms are being built at a more aggressive rate than any time in history, mainly for pharmaceutical, but not only pharmaceutical, there are other markets as well. The key consequence of the clean room is to stop contamination to the manufacturing happening within that clean room environment. We believe insulation plays an important part as in any other part of manufacturing in saving energy and making sure that we are utilizing our resources in the most economic way we can. But within a clean room, there is a lot of other important issues to consider when choosing your insulation. Materials are going to be subjected to a far more rigorous set of demands than in other areas. They will require chemical stability. They must be robust and durable, high purity, fire resistant. They must not shed particulates. They must emit no VOCs. They must not promote mold or fungi or other microbial species. And they must be able to be cleaned at high temperatures and with chemicals. And not only is the choice an economic choice when making your insulation choice, there also could be high risks by using the wrong material, endangering the probability of contamination into very expensive products. So the, really the purpose of this webinar is to dig a bit deeper into what makes TFIT Clean the only choice for the clean room environment for insulation. We hope you enjoyed today's webinar and look forward to any questions at the end. Thank you. So I'm Mike Rust. I'm the Global Development Manager for TFIT. I'll explain a little bit more about what I do and what the role entails very shortly. But my experience in thermal insulation products, well, starts with six years at Zoke Foams, developing the range of TFIT products. Um, before Zoke Foams, I was also six years at Armacell. So probably a lot of people online will know who Armacell are. They are one of the leading providers of rubber-based insulation. So I worked for them as uh, the leader and headed up their business in the UK and Ireland. Um, and then before that, I was lucky enough to work for 10 years in Asia. Um, and in that time, I was developing applications and markets for cross-linked PE foam, or that's often abbreviated to XLPE. Um, but basically, there are many, many applications for cross-linked PE foam. But by far, the most important and the most valuable for us at that time was anything to do with thermal insulation. So if you do a quick count up of the years here, that's over 20 years um, that I've been exposed to um, working with a variety of thermal insulation materials and products in different applications. But I can honestly say that TFIT 
PGDF based foam insulation is the most compelling insulation product that I've worked with to date, and never more so than if you put it into your clean room. So let's have a look exactly how TFIT can add value and save issues in your clean room. Okay, so um, we're here actually to talk about uh, hidden dangers in, in clean rooms and um, how you can um, reduce um, risk by using TFIT insulation. So let's just take a look, first of all, at the four main types of insulation that you might find in a clean room. So um, the first is melamine foam, which is a very soft, squishy kind of polyurethane foam. Um, it's um, sold under the brand of um, Techlite or Biox. Um, but melamine foam is great, apart from the fact that it does have some issues with particulates, as you will see um, shortly as we run through the slides. Um, the, the next group will be mineral wools or fiberglass uh, materials. So by their very nature, these do add particulates into the atmosphere, as we'll see. Um, we then come to the elastomer insulation group, which is um, basically K-flex or armor cell kind of um, uh, materials. They come in two types, either nitrile or EPDM. Um, the issue with these products can be with uh, with uh, VOCs and airborne molecular contaminants, and uh, we'll talk about, about that a little more in a moment. Uh, then, of course, there's a polymer-based foams, PVDF and nylon-based foams, of, of which um, TFIT is, a, is an example. So, you know, there are basically, there are, um, uh, uh, if, let's imagine for a moment that we are operators of, of clean rooms. So there are three types of uh, particulates or contaminations that we will be concerned with. There'll be fungal contamination, there'll be hazardous particulates, and then there'll be VOCs. And we'll go into a little bit more about those um, as, we, as we go through the presentation. So, uh, first of all, we've got uh, fungal contamination. So, you know, it's difficult to eradicate if you do get fungal contamination in a, in a clean room can lead to product recalls, reputational bad damage. And the main way that the fungal contamination spreads through a clean room is through condensation that can occur on insulation and insulating coal pipes. We wouldn't have any of those issues um, if you installed um, TFIT, um, but other material groups can lead to condensation, especially as the insulation breaks down. So fungal contamination. In terms of hazardous particulates, you know, these will be airborne particles that you might be able to just about see in direct sunlight. Um, actually, um, you know, the main ISO um, standard that controls particulates in clean rooms is ISO 14644. You know, that is the recognised standard. It was uh, expanded recently to specifically include assessment and suitability for use of equipment, um, looking at airborne particulate, particulate concentration. Um, but it didn't include testing or cleaning or, or selection of, of materials, especially insulation materials. Um, but we'll look at the uh, impact of particulates um, shortly. Um, and then we come to VOCs or volatile organic compounds. These are the absolutely microscopically small um, airborne molecular contaminants that can come from materials. Typically, they can come from paints, they can come from adhesives, they can come from carpets, they can come from all manner of different things. Um, but they are microscopically small. And just to understand that, um, you know, uh, in a silicon wafer plant, you might be uh, resolving down to the five to 10 nanometer scale with your etching onto silicon to make chips. So five to 10 nanometers, you think, what is five to 10 nanometers? Well, a human hair is 100,000 nanometers in diameter. So you can think that your five to 10 versus 100,000, 100,000 is the diameter of a hair. So, you know, really, really, really microscopically small. Uh, I just noticed, by the way, that Apple have just um, uh, released um, a press release uh, talking about the next generation of their chips are going to be at the two nanometer scale, so even smaller than five to ten. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to run and, and look at some of the product testing and performance testing where we look at fungal contamination, hazardous particulates and VOCs, and we're going to compare TFIT uh, performance with those of other well-known insulation materials and brands on the market. OK, so first of all, we're going to look at fungal contamination. So, um, you know, we're using ASTM G2115 method um, and basically it's, it's quite straightforward. You take a sample of foam. You first of all, you, on the top of it, you inoculate it um, with an agar. So, you know, an agar is a sugary, syrupy kind of liquid that kind of um, dissolves and dries out onto the surface of the material. And the idea of the agar is it helps promote the growth of fungal spores. So then on the top of that um, agar, we inoculate with spores, fungal spores, and then we put the whole prepared sample into an oven. 
Um, so that oven is running at 28 to 30 degrees, which is really, really, a really, really warm day when you're on your holiday, I'm sure you'd agree, at a relative humidity of over 85%. So it's really hot and sticky. It's very warm, 30 degrees, over 85% relative humidity. And it stays in the oven for 28 continuous days. And then we take the samples out and then we check with a 50 times microscope for growth of fungal spores. And actually, I think it's quite incredible in a way. T-Fit Clean has a zero um, uh, growth of fungal spores, whereas there are fungal spores on the top of a, an EB, EPDM armor cell sample. So I think that's quite an astonishing result. I think most materials under those conditions inoculated with spores after 28 days at 30 degrees at relative humidity of over 85 percent. I think there's a lot of materials that would have fungal spores growing all over them, but incredibly T-Fit Clean zero. So now we're going to look at uh, hazardous uh, particulate testing. So actually, um, we looked around for an ASTM test or an ISO test or a JIS test or whatever that, that tests for particulate release for insulation products in clean rooms. And we couldn't find anything. In fact, we couldn't find anything that we could make fit. Um, so we worked uh, with a company um, uh, called UCNET, who are specialists um, in looking at um, airborne particulates and pollution levels in, in the workspace. Um, and we came up with a, with our own test. So basically we took a, um, a glove box, which is sort of three foot by two foot by two foot, so it's quite small. And in the glove box, we've got a particulate counter. And then the idea is, is that we run a series of tests over a five minute um, testing period. So first of all, we put our own material in the glove box. We've got a granite slab and a new sharp knife and the particulate counter. And over a five minute test period, we chop up our material into segments. And then at the end of the five minutes, we check for the um, particulate count on the particulate counter. And you can see in the bottom corner there the graph for TFIT. So you can see that over the five minute period, um, the background count in particulates was always running down, even through the cutting period. Of course, one of the benefits of using a material such as TFIT, which has such low particulate release, is that you can manipulate and install our material whilst the clean room is active and live. There's no need to shut down the clean room whilst you are installing or maybe reinstalling TFIT clean, which would not be the case, as you can see, with the melamine product um, from, T from Tech Light. We then wipe out the glove box and we replace everything, brand new sharp knife. We then cut up some melamine foam, some Tech Light as it was. And you can see in the graph there in the middle um, on the right hand side, you can see there was a huge release of particulates um, as we were cutting through the material. You can see the particulate counter was really picking up an awful lot more particulates um, through that five minute period. We were quite surprised. We didn't really expect the melamine foam to release that amount of particulates. So lastly, we're going to look at volatile organic compounds or, or outgassing. And um, for this series of testing, we uh, we, we used um, a, a company called Excite, a German-based company. They're a global authority, world leaders really in specifying, building and operating clean rooms. And they do a lot of testing as well. So um, we work with them um, on the uh, to test for VOC release of our materials from our materials to the VDI standard. It's a German test standard, uh, VDI 2083. So what happens in this test is that you take a sample of foam and you put it in an oven for three hours at 22 degrees and then collect the VOCs. And then you repeat the test at 90 degrees for three hours and then also you collect the VOCs. So if you're thinking about typical sort of paints and varnishes and floor coverings and that kind of material, if you warm them up for 90 for to 90 degrees centigrade for three hours, you can imagine that they begin to emit smells and vapors and, and things like that. And that's really what we're testing for here. So you know, at 90 degrees, you can certainly smell certain um, fumes and vapors and things that are coming off the materials. So at the bottom, you can see the results there and um, towards the right hand side, T-Fit Clean, we're at 18.14 uh, micrograms per gram in terms of collected VOCs after testing for three hours at 90 degrees. And that number, as you can see, is of a completely different order compared to uh, Armaflex, the HT, the EPDM brands, or the Nitrile, or even the Tech Light. You can see that all the other materials, you know, are really uh, outgassing quite readily and to quite a high degree compared to um, T-Fit Clean. The other thing to, uh, that, that was interesting to us in the Excite certification um, was that they confirmed that T-Fit Clean meets the acceptance criteria for a semiconductor clean room for a coverage of more than 50% of the net clean room area. So I think, again, that independent acceptance and certification by Excite for use of T-Fit Clean in semiconductor clean rooms 
should add a lot of confidence if you're thinking or are going to install CFIT Clean in your clean room. So in conclusion, I hope that we've been able to demonstrate the relative performance of TFIT products versus the competition, and that you can be confident that our product, TFIT Clean, does not create fungal contamination, um, doesn't contribute any airborne particulates, and has very, very low levels of outgassing when you're talking about VOC pollutants or airborne molecular contaminants. There is a question and answer session at the, uh, at the end of the webinar. And of course, if you have any other questions or would like to see more details about the testing that we've conducted, then please reach out to us on, on email. We'd be very happy to answer any of your questions. OK, so now I'm going to hand over to Brian at ESI, who's got some more information and discussion points around TFID. Hello, everyone. My name is Brian Fahey. I'm the managing director of ESI Technologies. I have a history in sales looking after TFIT Clean, and I was doing frontline selling for the product in 2008 when we first took it on. Um, right after we took it on, I was responsible for one of Europe's largest biotech facilities um, in Dublin, uh, where they installed the product in 2009. So I've witnessed this product become the de facto standard per se in clean room insulation in Ireland and indeed Europe since that period. So although I'm no longer involved directly in front end sales, I am responsible for the TFIT European distribution agreement we currently have in place with Sodafums. So I have been keeping track of the progress and indeed success up until now. So in terms of the uh, pharmaceutical industry we predominantly deal with in Ireland, what did do they like about TFIT Clean? TFIT was developed as um, the existing products in the market were not, not able to sufficiently meet the rigorous requirements of clean room applications, which has been touched on earlier by James and Mike. So one of the world's leading biotech companies, it used to be American Home Products, then was acquired, um, changed their name to Wyatt, um, and which is now Pfizer. They expressly asked the leading global engineering consultant, Floor Daniel, to develop a product that worked and solved the problems that every other existing product could not solve. The single largest benefit that TFIT brings in my eyes is that it's a closed cell material. So what does this mean? It means that you can leave it in a bucket of water for weeks and it will not wet out. And it does this without any outer cladding that every other single product on the market requires whether this be hard PVC cladding, stainless steel metal cladding, or soft PVC jacket. So what's important to end users when they select materials for their clean room insulation? To me, it's protection and performance. The reason every other competing product requires a protective layer is that they are not true closed cell materials. Therefore, they need to try limit the moisture from the air getting into the, into the insulation itself. In my experience, while this is possible on an initial install, as soon as operators begin work again, the protective layer quickly breaks down from people either changing gaskets or filters or even touching off the pipes uh, as they work or clean them. So in my experience, I suppose, what have I um, seen firsthand in terms of um, issues uh, in the market. In a clean room environment, water is the biggest source for bacteria and fungus growth. So if you see it, some of the photographs attached, um, you can see the consequences of um, incorrect insulation. Uh, and these photos are from products we've removed from the pharmaceutical and biotech clean rooms. And I've squeezed these like a sponge, you know, it gets so wet. Um, and you can see the mold on the inside um, and on the hole on the bottom photo where the water is drained out. Uh, I've seen plants shut down production for months as a result of contamination in the lines. And this is the biggest fear for any biotech or pharma company. As well as competitor products absorbing moisture, they can also burn away, in quotes. Uh, and that means that the insulation just actually you know, fades away over time uh, and therefore isn't insulating effectively. Which means that, you know, in this industry, the large amounts of energy is consumed to keep the CIP wash at, say, 121 degrees C. So for me, TFIT is the gold standard, uh, and that is why all the new biotech projects built in Ireland since 2009 have generally opted for TFIT. 
This would include several of the world's leading biotech companies who will no longer use any other product on their sites and have sold specified TFIT for their clean room applications. So I suppose finally, um, what brands or materials of insulation is TFIT replaced? Well, I mean, we all know the, the leading brands on the market without going in, into them and naming them. Uh, almost all other insulation materials I've come across for clean room applications are typically open cell that create particulates while handling, absorbs moisture, and thus have to be jacketed with PVC or other materials. Any crack in that jacket will introduce particulates into the clean room and moisture will lead to mold and fungus growth. TFIT is of particulate free closed cell PVDF foam that will not transmit or absorb moisture and is entirely washable or cleanable without a requirement for a jacket. One other point, at only 6.35 mils thick, mils thick, it's low profile and is also a big advantage for tight spaces, which is more common now as plants seek to reduce their footprint. That's just a quick uh, summary from myself based on my history with TFIT. I'll now pass you over, over for the Q&A session. session. Thank you, Brian. And again, to all of our speakers, um, I hope you enjoyed our webinar. It brings us quite neatly to um, our Q&A session. So let's jump straight to our live Q&A. But before we do, a quick reminder, if you have a question, please ask using the chat facility. And if you have a question which is specific to any one of our speakers, again, please say in the chat facilities. Um, we will try and answer as many of your questions as possible, given, given the amount of time we've got left. Any that we're not able to answer during this session as we run out of time, we will reach out directly to the person asking the question and answer after the webinar. Um, we have had quite a few questions come in already, which is great. Um, I will start with one which I'm going to direct to Brian, based on the fact that he's been working with the brand in the market for quite some time. Um, in your experience, Brian, how long does our material last? That's a good question, Nuffa. Um, To be honest, the first major facility we put it into in 2009, the issue they had was they had a lot of water on the floor. And that was predominantly coming from the um, condensation of cold pipes, which would be glycol used in the heat exchangers. So they were prepared to cut a purchase order for 80,000 euros to actually install drip trays to collect this water uh, when I met them. And I basically worked with them to give them the confidence to put in TFIT. The first question they asked me was, how long does it last? And I said, to be honest, I don't really have the answer because you're one of the first large installs we did. The product was designed um, in 2008, and this was just the start of 2009. So I said I would expect it to last two years. Um, that same facility has the exact same TFIT installed in place to this day. So they have upgraded some of it, but so the answer in simple terms is 10 years plus, which is good for the environment and sustainability. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Another question that's just come in, uh, an interesting one about valves. Um, Keith has asked the question uh, that he's mentioned that we he's seen valves available in our portfolio. Um, he's been told that they're not available. Has this changed? And I'm going to direct that at James. Uh, well, you should direct it to Brian, really, because with ESI, we, um, we've developed um, coverings for valves, which are really, really good because that gives you a complete insulation around something which previously hasn't been done. Um, they look neat, they last a long time and they save energy and um, they're kind of are very complementary to their own. So certainly are available. Um, and I, I think they're one of the best bits of the range actually to take advantage of and can complete the install. Brian, I don't know if you want to add anything on that. I agree 100%. And the only thing I would add is that you can take them off and put them back on. So if you have to change a seal or, or, or a diaphragm in a valve, um, they're completely removable and you can put them back on afterwards uh, very easily. And you can do that with your own maintenance teams. Uh, another question that's come in from Jim. I'm going to direct this one at Mike. Uh, do the tape and adhesive used to secure the butt and sorry, longitudinal joints show the same ability to resist the cleaning and wash down process. Uh, Mike, you need to, uh, Mike, you need to turn your mic on.
Uh, apologies. Um, James, can you answer that question? Essentially, you can clean in all directions and you won't see any uh, issues with that. Um, I think it's essentially the, the, the good thing about cleaning the TFIT product um, is that it, it, it allows you to use varied uh, chemicals um, and, and because of its chemical resistance, um, you know, it's, it's tremendous product to clean, and make sure and maintain its, its cleanliness. Um, partly because of its resilience, it doesn't matter where the angle is. And because you're saving space with the amount of uh, insulation you require, it often makes it actually easier to access and clean it well. Hopefully my microphone's working now. Yes, well done. And if it is, good. Um, well, uh, hello everyone. And um, I'd just like to add that on the website, we have got details in an application profile where we tested six of the common cleaning agents on the phone and also on the tape. This was a, a seven day continuous swab test. So it's, um, a, a, you know, it's, it's, it's a test that um, is a lot tougher than anything in real life. Um, and all the materials and the tapes at the end of the seven day testing, continual contact testing, um, didn't show any signs of defamation, cracking, or any kind of loss of adhesion on the tape. It's, it's on the website and um, uh, we can direct you to a link maybe at the end. Great, thank you, Mike. Another question that's come in and, in, and an interesting one, one I'm sure that you'll all be uh, concerned with. How long does in installation take and do we need to shut down? I will direct that one at James and Mike. Uh, essentially, I would always recommend to shut down when you're doing installation because it makes sure health and safety is uh, always kind of at the forefront. Although the product is capable of being installed at ambient temperatures and, and within a certain temperature range, um, as long as the installer can get to it uh, while the process is running. And that's also backed up by the fact that you will not get particulate going to the atmosphere if you cut and move this product around, which is obviously very key in a clean room. Um, but, and, and because of the speed of install, um, you know, it makes it you know, incredibly easy. And our partners, ESI, uh, who really helped us kind of get this, the installation, if you like, uh, uh, more systematic. Um, and then they've got a training program for it as well. Um, it tells us from historical data that we can install very, very quickly uh, all the installation within kind of hours compared to um, days, which you'd look at alternatives. So I'd, I'd just add on to that, that um, we mentioned already that you don't need any cladding around the outside of the material. So that makes for a fast and easy install. We supply elbows and seas, preformed elbows and seas, which fit clean as well. And we do have the full range of tapes and sealants to make the whole thing um, take place very quickly, very easily. Um, thank you, guys. I've had another question specifically for Brian. Um, as John is based in Cork, the question is, is the insulation of utilities not necessary in a clean room now widely, wi widely available? So if there is utilities in the clean room, and that would be, say, wifi water, uh, could be hot uh, CIP, um, glycol feeding the reactors, they should all be insulated. So we insulate hot and cold, and TFIT works uh, from a range of minus 40 to about 155, 160. So I would recommend that you insulate all pipes inside the clean room. The one thing I will add as well is that up until now, because the, uh, the outer diameter of traditional insulation, because it needs that extra uh, clad and, you know, lagging around it, that's typically been, you know, very large in terms of the footprint. So on small spaces, you would really struggle to insulate the full 100% of the, of, of the pipes. Uh, you'd normally typically only get to between 85% to 90%. But because TFIT, because of its small footprint at 6.35 mil thick, and that's whether it's half inch, one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch, it's all 6.35 mil thick. You can insulate 100% of the skid or the, or, or the pipes. And it's, it's, that means you're driving that efficiency as well in terms of heat losses and insulating properties. So I hope that answers John's question. He knows who we are, I presume. So he can um, send me an email or give me a call afterwards. Brilliant. Thanks, John. Thank you. Well, I would just add that, uh, just at that point, if it's inside the clearing, Brian's answer is completely right, but also the temperature use of PVD, PVDF, we are the only um, foam uh, approved by NASA. So I just tell you the space is about 190 to 220 degrees. Now I'm not saying all the tape and everything will hold about, but P 
PVDF will not fail at very cold temperatures, it's worth knowing. Plus the rest of the T-fit range can also work outside of the clean room for when you're going outside. It's really critical we save more and more energy from kind of wastage on these pipes and service pipes as well. Great, thanks guys. We've had another question in from Harold, Harald. Apologies if I've pronounced that incorrectly. Uh, question is, what is a thermal resistance example for a steam pipe at 140 centigrade? What will be the temperature on the T-fit surface Will it be less than 60 centigrade? I hope I've uh, said that correctly. <laughs> can't, can't answer those directly because there's a lot of different factors of, of what's happening in that pipe and, and, and location. What I'd say is that if you get in touch with us separately, we'll be able to come back with some answers around that and things. But what we, what we can definitely say is that you see a considerable surface drop in temperature if you're looking from a kind of touch point by using uh, um, T-fit clean. Yeah, I just add as well, James, from our experience when that question is asked, we have a surface temperature chart uh, for T-Fit Clean, which shows the outside temperature versus the temperature within the pipe. And in in terms of you know general accepted principles, um, we've been installing this since 2009, right? So it satisfies every requirement for the applications needed. So if it was above, you know, even 25 or 30 degrees C for a one two one C, CIP wash, um, it wouldn't be acceptable. So the goal is to try to keep the outside temperature down so that it doesn't, uh, you know, uh, uh, lead to heat losses or, you know, obviously doesn't, uh, it's not hot enough to cause burns. So that chart is probably available and uh, Harold, we can send that on to you or you can, you know, go to Zoda Homes, they'll be able to pass it on. But in terms, James is absolutely correct. In terms of each individual application, it's best to just run the calculations and Zoda Films can do that for you and give you a, a personalized um, uh, chart and, and data to suit, suit your application. Brilliant. Uh, another question that's coming from Paul, where do you manufacture? That's very easy, globally. Um, we, we manufacture in China, Europe, um, uh, where we have our facilities. Uh, we have the ability to manufacture in the US as well. Um, so we are truly kind of globally operating and try and be near our customers to limit our footprint with transportation, especially as we see costs of freight go up so high in the world at the moment. Um, and that's something we do to try and be near our customers. And pharmaceutical is obviously uh, you know, very, uh, a very global uh, industry. Great. I've just had another question come in from Matt, um, quite an interesting one. We have sort of covered this off in a roundabout way, but I will ask it again. What is your fire certification rating? So basically, we're independently tested by UL, so UL723. And we can send you the details again on, on the website as well. If you're looking at the Euro classes, we are a, a BS1 D0, so very little smoke output um, from our material compared to especially um, elastomeric or rubber products. Um, we also have the FM4910 specification test. Uh, and again, um, we could send you the, uh, the link, the direct link to the FM website where you can see our independent um, qualification from Edmund. I think it's worth pointing out that a lot of these materials are stem from um, materials used in aviation. So we have a lot of toxicities while testing, et cetera, um, which we can add to the top of those. Um, it's really best in class material. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, another question, um, it works in line with the cleaning question about, <clears throat> excuse me, adhesives and tapes. Um, what kind of tapes and adhesives do we recommend for use with TFIT Clean? So we have, we, uh, we supply a PVDF based tape. Um, the full details of the product um, are available on the website. There's the data sheet and everything on there. Uh, we've tested um, an independent third party um, sealant adhesive. Uh, we've tested that quite extensively. I'm very, very happy uh, with the way that product works. And again, the details are available on the website in terms of data sheets. Great. Another quick question that's just come in from Bob. Uh, um, sorry, I can't pronounce his name. Apologies. Do we, does our product need a jacketing? And I will direct that at Mike or James. Uh, no, it, it, simply no, it doesn't need a jacket. It's closed cell um, at a quarter inch or 6.35 millimeter. You're buying, you're buying an insulation product, which is quarter of an inch thick. You're also buying a water vapor barrier, which is 6.35 millimeters thick. 
um, you know, the, the product is independently closed cell throughout its thickness. So even if you knit it or you scratch it or you damage it in some way, um, you will not then get wicking all the way through the material because all the closed cells are independent of each other. So it really doesn't need the jacket. And in a way, we'd rather it wasn't jacketed because if you put, you know, soft PVC on there with adhesive, then you're spoiling some of the fire certifications. Well, what we would add, though, is that some people have particular aesthetics they want in their clean room. Um, and we have seen jacketed requirements in the past. We think, as Mike said, they look a bit ugly, um, but we certainly are open to those uh, requirements to, to whatever people may require. Okay, we've got a bit more time for just a couple couple more questions. If you've got any, please do wing them through. Um, I'm going to ask another question. Um, I will direct this at James. What is the cost and what's the difference between ours and competitors? Uh, always the, the golden question. Um, the cost of ownership is what I like to talk about. Um, and I think Brian alluded to earlier on, if you compare our products to other insulation materials out there, the lifespan of it is five, if not times more than, than other materials. So although the initial cost may be slightly higher, um, the lifetime cost is considerably lower. And also it's a great insulator, so it's saving you energy, you know, when it gets wet, anything else, it doesn't lose its ability to save that energy. So it remains saving you money, which is the whole point of having insulation all the way through its lifespan. Great. And I've just had another question coming through email from Andrew. Thank you. Um, he's looking for performance specifications and comparative costs versus melamine insulation and other standard insula insulation in the market. So we, we, have, the, we have that information available. Um, Andrew, I think you said, uh, you know, if you can reach out to us, we can uh, share some more information over on email. Uh, we've got some tables and some, um, you know, some ideas of how to compare uh, the melamine uh, materials with, with CFIT. I remember that it needs cladding as well, um, and it will suffer from moisture in comparison to what CFIT will. And also very high particulate release too, um, try chopping it up in the, uh, in the fume cupboard. Yeah, and just add, from my, from my point of view, the installation time, is so much quicker when you don't have to put the jacket over the product. So in our experience, it's roughly a third of the time to, to install, which brings a, a massive overall saving. And then when you add in the maintenance costs, as I said, we have facilities now which have had this product installed for over 10 years. So in my experience, most typical installation, you have to start maintaining it within a year. So if you add an overall cost of ownership, TFIT by far outperforms any other product in the market. Brilliant. Okay, I think that brings us quite neatly to the end of our webinar. Many thanks to all of you for joining and also for all the questions. Um, thank you again for our to our speakers. Uh, a quick reminder, we will be sending you out an email with a, a short survey on. Please do take the time to, to complete the survey and send us back your feedback as it's invaluable for us going forward. Um, the webinar will be available on our YouTube channel. And again, we will share that in the questionnaire that we send out tomorrow. Many thanks again. Um, any final words from our spe speakers or are we good? Just thank you very much, everyone, for your time and attention. Hopefully we've been able to explain why you should always consider TFIT in the clean room. Yeah, just to re-emphasize what Mike said, and please get in contact with us because um, each individual's insulation requirements are, are very different. Um, the good thing about this product, it, 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 it is fit to perform, fit for all, as the tagline goes. Um, and so uh, it'd be good to talk to you what your requirements are with the team. Yeah, and just say thanks to everyone for joining. We know you're all busy, so we really appreciate it. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you me. all. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Cheers.